Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you everything that's happening in and around the city of Missoula this weekend, your first Friday, December 1st, of Wake Up Missoula. So let's kick things off. Uh, I just want to uh, say that the Washington Children's Shelter is doing an event this Sunday as well. I have some guests on here. Um, Ali Fontenot and uh, Hayden Gortz, Grote, sorry, is going to be here uh, talking about uh, their uh, open house at Wat Watson's Children's Shelter and how you guys can get involved and help out the children's shelter, shelter that helps children. So uh, we got some weather, we got some news items that are happening here and around the city of Missoula. I got uh, pre-critic, I got the flagship Friday video of the week, I got some events, and of course I got your uh, first Friday rundown of all the art stops you should take while you're downtown hanging out in Missoula for first Friday. So let's start off things with weather. It is currently 30 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 39. Your low is going to be 29. And then by uh, pretty much throughout the pretty much the whole weekend, it's going to have a slight chance of rain and snow mixtures throughout the whole entire weekend. 60% chances of this happening. Um, but pretty much uh, if you are from Missoula like myself, it'll probably come and go and come and go. And then it'll just kind of this like linger. Maybe you might see some snowfall in the morning, but then it probably will melt in the afternoon. So you can expect those kind of uh, temperatures and weather things to happen during that time. Uh, Bobby Halk, uh, in terms of news, um, Mon uh, Montana and local news, uh, former Grizz Bass uh, football coach, <laughs> is uh, coming back to the university as the 37th coach. And while during his tenure, he had a 80 to 17 win-loss record, but from the Missoula article that has been following this story, it seems like Hauk is more problematic than what he, he could bring to the Grizz football. So of course, after his departure from um, UM, Bobby's replacement athletic organization went into a, nose, uh, a, a, a nosedive in reputation when players were accused of sexual assault crimes. A Missoula woman who put together an online petition telling the University of Montana not to hire Bobby Hauk is as its head football coach became a subject of online doxing campaign on a Grizzlies fan website that include vile personal comments and pub uh, publication of her home address. Um, uh, the, let's see, um, I, I need to look that up, sorry. I, I didn't get her whole name quite yet. So uh, her name is Davy, um, last name Davy, uh, let's see. All right, I'll just skip ahead. Uh, so uh, Davey said that she's a Grizz football fan who has enjoyed watching and attending games for years, but earlier this week when she saw a news story that Hulk may be interviewed for UM's head coaching job, she was appalled. Davey said she saw a post on Wednesday on Twitter from Grizz fans seeking personal information about her post online, um, a, a practice commonly referring, referred to as doxing. Then the post, um, Maroon Blood, um, including um, her address, came to her attention. But, uh, but of course, um, she went up to Kent Haslam, the athletics department, and uh, she was talking about her concern about this. And as well, uh, UM Athletics D Director Ken Haslam also talked to Davey. If Hawk does, retur does return to UM, which he is, he will share the very candid and upfront conversation about player conduct and the two men had during Hawk's interview. Um, he says he feels strongly that he would need to address those rights up front and also adding that the UM has a better policies and procedures in place for handling player conduct issues than in the past. In national news, uh, this uh, basically, uh, I got this from NPR, and this uh, I thought this was a very interesting story, but this is uh, from, June, from June 1963. Um, in Alabama, May Mary Hamilton, eight, uh, who was 28 at the time, stood in courtroom before a judge. She was a black civil rights activist arrested for nonviolent protest, and a judge was losing his patience. Um, the atmosphere of the, the, uh, of the summer was a truly frightening and terrifying, says Colin Morris, a historical professor at Manhattan College. The Klan was high, as highly active, uh, the Ku Klux Klan, and on more than, more than one occasion, there had been uh, attacks on uh, uh, Gad, Gadsden, Gadsden, sorry about that, um, but Hamilton was frightened. She was furious. She refused to answer the prosecutor's questions, and she, says, she said, I won't respond until you call me Miss Hamilton. So the degree inside the courtroom, the whole idea of this would basically be a catalyst in changing how uh, people used words inside the courtroom, the, the kind of grammar and how people would be addressed in the courtroom as equals regarding um, the certain status. So I if you appear in a courtroom, either a a in the defense, you will be referred to respectfully uh, regardless of your race or gender. And she was the ones who kind of was the start of all this happening as well. So basically, uh, while she was in prison, 
a mayor visitor uh, uh, in uh, in Tennessee, a mayor visited her cell and referred to her as Mary Hamilton. Uh, of course, he corrected her, and she said it was Miss Hamilton. And uh, they recalled a moment in their oral history. And if you don't know how to speak to a lady, Hamilton told the mayor, then get out of my cell. So those are kind of things that are, uh, that it's an interesting story, and I suggest you read the whole article, npr.org. Uh, through many appearances in court, uh, it left many judges and prosecutors annoyed with her behavior of being treated like they would treat any white man. And as a result of her actions um, on not bud budging, courtroom rules were put into place that all men and women would be on equal playing fields inside the courtroom. So that's an interesting uh, historical tidbit that was uh, mentioned in an NPR article, and I suggest you check that out. But I'm going to stop keeping my uh, guests waiting. Um, I'll be right back uh, right after this art clip from the Missoula Art Museum, and um, we're going to talk about the Watchman's Children's Shelter. guys, we're back here with Ali Fontenot and uh, Hayden uh, Groats, and you guys are here to talk about the Watching Children's Shelter open house that's happening on Sunday. So for those of you who don't know what the Watching Children's Shelter, please kind of explain um, what you guys do for the community you and bet. for the children. You bet. Thanks for having us, Scott. Yeah. Um, Watson Children's Shelter is an emergency shelter for children who have been removed from the home and need a place to stay for a temporary, it's, it's an emergency shelter. Right. So children who've been removed due to abuse or neglect. Um, and all the children that are placed at the shelter are placed with us by the state. So the state of Montana. And this is the, uh, uh, one of the only chances people actually get a chance to actually see what's going on inside the Washington Children's Shelter. That's right. Um, uh, as you can imagine, we have pretty strict confidentiality. Right. And it's, it's the, the shelter is where the children live. In fact, we have two homes. Um, and so we open the house up one time a year, and this is it. This is the opportunity for people in Missoula and our surrounding communities to come uh, see our house, check it out, and cool. see what we do, get a little bit more information, and yeah. Yep. And Hayden, um, I heard uh, just kind of like uh, eavesdropping on your conversation okay. that you were uh, doing some decorating oh my gosh. Uh, as well. So yes. um, tell us about uh, what people <clears throat> can expect from this open you, house. So I've been trying to post little sneak peeks on Facebook, so keep your eyes open there. But um, the floor to ceilings, walls, everything is covered. There are probably six trees. Um, I mean, Everything is covered with decorations. It's it feels like a, like Wonderland when you go in there. It's it's beautiful and it's unbelievable. Yeah, they do a good job. Everybody we started decorating like a month ago. Yeah, yeah. We, and I was like still decorating last ago. night. So, have you have you guys done this before? Had an open house like this before? We do it every year. We do it every year. So it's the it's a really nice uh, way to kind of kick off the holiday season. Um, the holidays, as you can imagine, are are really hard for the kids. Right. No, no kid ever imagines living at a shelter, and during the holidays yeah. it can be particularly hard. So we try to make it as festive as possible during the holidays, and uh, like I said, we do it every year. And Watson Children's Shelter has been around for 40 years. Wow. Yeah, we, we celebrated our 40th anniversary this year. 
I mean, and of course, it was named after uh, um, w Janice Watson Janice is Watson. our founder. Yeah, she was a, a an elementary school teacher and retired, and then opened Jack and Jill Daycare Center. And 40 years ago, the police came to her and said, asked her if she could accept a few children on a temporary basis, and that's how it all started. Wow. Yeah. And uh, you guys, and it's been going on ever since. And you've been with uh, Washington Children's Shelter for a few years. For Few years, for a few sure. years. <laughs> don't want to get too much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, um, for those of you who uh, are more uh, familiar with their uh, more uh, annual event, the Bike for Shelter, it's a uh, it's basically invites people from the community to basically bike and donate and get involved and kind of meet some of the kids, you know, around the Fort Missoula area for Bike for Shelters. It is right? this year. It's going to be on May nineteenth. It's a big event. We have hundreds of people come out. All around from not just from Missoula but all around surrounding communities and it's really a family friendly bike ride there's a two mile bike ride an 11 mile bike ride carnival games all kind of stuff but that's like I said coming up in May do you have any like uh, kids who were in the shelter from back in the day who grow grow up who still kind of come back and still kind of be like oh Washington Children's Shelter was amazing we do as a matter of fact we have a board member right now who's a former shelter child wow. Yeah, we have, a, we have a lot of adults come back years later and say, thank you so much for what you did. I don't know where I would be if it weren't for Watson yeah, Children's we've Shelter. we've received an email, I think even this past year, someone saying something like that too. So they try to keep in touch a little bit. Uh, let's talk about your website a little bit. So uh, WashingtonChildrenShelter.org yeah. <laughs> is a great way for anybody to uh, basically kind of see uh, what you guys are all about and more information, just like how you can donate, how you can get involved, how uh, basically just uh, how it supports children. So do you want to kind of like kind yeah. of go over? Yeah, you want me to show bit? you yeah. just uh, about the home tour? So this weekend's home tour, um, here's a little up upcoming events right here. It's on Sunday, December 3rd from 11 to 2. It's going to be at our Buck House location uh, right next to the Peak Racket Club off of Blue Mountain Road. Um, and if you're interested in helping at all for the holidays, um, we've got an awesome Hover Over Ways to Give in our Holiday We Care ad right here. Um, you can sponsor a child for the holidays. Um, you'll see their clothing sizes and then also some uh, presents that they've asked for. And anybody wants, that wants to help with that, just give us a call and we'll see who's available still. Cool. So, so it's a nice little open wish list that the kids have made. Yes. And uh, it seems like uh, the very basic things they need are clothing. Yes, always clothing, always, always clothing. Um, and just and around Christmas time, we always try to give them new clothes. Yeah. Right. Because try to make it special. Yep. Like anybody does for their kids. Yep. So is there anything else you guys want to say before we uh, wrap up? I don't think so, other than we really encourage people to come out and check out the house. Bring your kids. Yeah. It, it truly is just a, an open house. Hot chocolate and cookies. Uh, again, it's a really nice way to kick off the holiday season, get into the holiday spirit. We have a, I was, I was telling you earlier, uh, somewhat life-size Santa and Mrs. Claus. <laughs> they're, they're about this tall. Um, kids love it. Kids really love it. The, the house is crazy decorated. We'll even have music this year. Oh, yes. Cool. We're going to have, we're going to, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. someone's going to be playing violin and trumpet at the front entrance yeah. and Christmas songs. So somebody, you too. know, that's the thing about the Missoula community. People come out yeah. and ask, I mean, people are asking, constantly asking us, what can I do, what can I do? And there's lots of different ways you can give to the shelter. And um, this gentleman reached out and said, hey, my wife and I would like to come and play holiday music for your home tour. We were like, that's, oh, that's awesome. awesome. So yeah. they're coming. Yeah. <laughs> we're pretty excited about that, as you can tell. Of course, uh, going back to the event is happening this Sunday from 11 to 2 p.m. That's right. Um, at Washington Children's Shelter. Uh, you can go to washingtonchildrenshelter.org for more information about where to find it, uh, how to donate, and basically just how to get involved and help children of Missoula who are just at a place in their life where they're just struggling a little bit. Exactly. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, we'll be, we'll be right back. Uh, we got still got plenty of more show to show you guys. So stay with us. If you read the Communist Manifesto, and cool. my student, my freshmen are reading it this weekend. I'll see what they think. Right in the age of Bernie Sanders, what they think of this particular uh, manuscript, if they understand it. Uh, it's there about overcoming the limits of human possibility. And uh, the Communist Manifesto is a grandiose, as is capital, 
uh, in some ways, pian to capitalism. It argues that capitalism is the most amazing, the most uh, uh, productive system ever conceived in human history. Marx is primarily a sociologist historian of capitalism. But, he says, it is a system that holds people down. It may make them more wealthy, but it doesn't realize full human potential. And that can only be in a system where we transcend capitalism and begin to think of the whole human being, right? And then they sort of cogitate and, and fa fantasize about how that, that could happen. <laughs> so what about someone like Stalin? Stalin took Marx and particularly Lenin and Engels' view on Marx very seriously. I would say for Stalin, Marxism was his sociology. It was his worldview. It was the way he understood the world. But he was also a pragmatic and often opportunistic politician who had his own personal preferences. You've got two marches going on, two armies in the field. And this is a, a bad outcome and will lead to bad conflict, as we saw in the Code Access Pipeline. So that's what happens when the bridge isn't in place to span the divide. One final slide, which is this picture. That is that same Senate wing with the tympanum behind uh, with its um, statues depicting the progress of civilization. But below it are a group of major tribal leaders who gathered in Washington uh, as a tribal unity effort and also to create a different narrative. Like that narrative is wrong and that narrative failed, even though it's built into the stone of our capital building. There's another narrative that needs to get equal and full respect. There's a bit of a feeling, I think, an assumption, that if we keep interacting, because we're superior, we Americans, we're, it's an exceptionalism that we Americans have. But they're going to be more like us. Just keep working with them, and they're going to be more like us. I've begun to question that assumption. Because China is China. The U.S. is U.S. We've got our <clears throat> independent judiciary, rule of law, you know, constitutional, bill of rights, free press, etc. They don't. It's one party rule. It's socialism, Chinese characteristics. And they think it's superior. That is, the government does. The party does. And the people so far are willing to kind of go along with it. So I guess I'm saying that when we deal with China, whether it's China per se or with North Korea, I think we have to recognize we're no better than them, than they are. They're no better than we are. They just, they are who they are and accept it. And it's mutual self-respect. And we have to, as a country, develop our longer term strategy. We're way too ad hoc, way too ad hoc. Our longer term strategy with respect to China, know where our bottom line is, know what we can agree with and we can't agree with, and, make, and, 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 and follow through with that. Um, I think that's very, very important. So you can make a difference. I feel like in my stories where the, the fictionalized science comes out is by way of exposition, like to explain something that's going on in the world. So it's that same, that impulse to, to make sense, to, to have the answers, but also I think that I employ it in my writing in other ways to do the opposite, to confuse a little bit, like to recreate a world that is both believable because it sounds like science, but is so bizarre as to be unbelievable. And so there's these like this conflict of like, this looks like something that I want to believe, but I don't. And those are some of the new programs that are gonna be airing on MCAT. Um, this weekend. So if you guys are find yourself indoors, uh, you can check that out by logging on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resource for everything MCAT from um, our Saturday drop-ins to our winter days at MCAT. You go to MCAT.org, you click on any of these links, one channel 189 or 190, and you can find out any links to all our content that we uh, broadcast through our channel and through Charter Communications. So it's that easy. You can also watch live um, through our channel as well. So if you don't have Charter, you can actually go to a website and actually watch live what's on our channel right here and now. So um, I think it's, uh, it's t about time to talk about some other things that are coming out this week. It's time for Pre-Critic. I don't know what I'm doing. This is really uh, distracting. Uh, <laughs> 
Let's talk about the movie that's coming out this week. Uh, not necessarily in Missoula, but it's coming out this weekend from Tommy Wiseau's famed movie, The Room. Comes The Disaster Artist, a movie so good it makes The Room more intriguing, but just as disappointing. Why people in this film community liked this movie is beyond me, but watch a movie about the following tropes that make uh, th of making it of um, where truth is stranger than fiction basically I'm gonna see this movie but if you don't want to spoil the ending of this movie then you should have never or, or never watched or heard of the room in the first place um, up next we got Wonder Wheel Woody Allen in a period piece about a Ferris wheel on a port the temperature is moderate to hot enough to allow such characters to visit the beach and have adventures watch a woman lay in the bed in the background we see a w Ferris wheel in question as her she finds herself um, herselfing in a Woody Allen film. Um, there is usually nothing really going on, and I, uh, and I watch the trailer. Um, just a bunch of people living and sleeping with each other. Um, then insert a newbie, and you get a Woody Allen film, because that's basically how most of his movies work, is that you have the norm, and then you add an, an unknown element, and then you got a movie. I think that th that's pretty much every movie. You just like, oh, you, you have a person who just throws the whole dynamic of everything that's going on there into, into whack. All right, coming up next, we got The Shape of Water. The creature from the Black Lagoon, Bla Black Lagoon gets the girl. That's what this movie is about. It's a creature that is captured by the government, ooh la la, um, and then hires someone to clean up late night, and she confines it in the prisoner and hatches a scheme to release him from prison Hellboy colon Abe Sapien prequel which is not a prequel even though it has the same actor and director from those movies Shape of Water oh uh, okay I get it because it doesn't have a single shape therefore it's a subjective title implying anything can happen S wait wait I, I already did this movie yeah, yeah I t okay that concludes pre-critic I have a wonderful wonderful uh, nice little uh, movie for you guys it's called uh, flagship Friday and it's from the um, Hellgate high school kids so without further ado here's flagship Friday and when I come back I'm gonna talk about all your first Friday events that are going on hey wake up hey it's me Dante uh, the fire puncher Tay is my last name. There's no correlation. You're going to be missing the festival. Man, we haven't been to the festival since we were kids, right? Welcome to the Crystal Festival of Monster Safety. I am Gant, 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 I am White Mage. Let me show you to the crystal. Here is the crystal that has kept us safe for millennia. Feel free. Don't mind if I do, a White Mage. Intagnion! Yes, it is I, Antagnion. Antagnion! I shall take the white crystal for myself to rule the world! And so on and so forth. Take the sword! Magic! Magic! Time for 
for me to make my escape. The end. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's the movie. All right. So let's talk about some things that are happening in the downtown Missoula scene. Kicking things off at the Radius Gallery, they're doing a uh, an annu uh, uh, holiday sale, holiday show. Oh, sorry. There's a holiday sale going on, but this isn't the sale. This is a holiday show at the Radius Gallery. Don't miss the exciting exhibit of affordable art. Okay, so it is a sale, too. Of uh, over 130 artists of various mediums, both 2D and 3D. Great gift ideas, as well as super abundant celebration of Missoula art community. Up next, we got our side. First Friday at the Missoula Art Museum. Um, Elisa Harkin, uh, Tanya Lukin Linklater, um, Marian Nicholson, um, Tanis uh, Savitin, and it's happening at the Missouri Art Museum tonight, and it'll pretty much be happening all that stuff. So join um, with curator Wendy Redstar, an artist from the group exhibit Our Side, a re-examination of land, body, language, and history from a pers uh, perspective of four contemporary indigenous Americans and First Nation artists. Um, this is a generally su Our Side is generally supported by Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts. So these are uh, some folks who got a chance to go to New York, do some photography stuff as well that was featured at the Missouri Art Museum, and I believe that they'll be doing some more art as well in the future. So I look forward to that, and you should too. Um, I think that I th I'm not sure if I actually showed that or not, but I think that is nope. That me, of course. I, I've been showing you some stuff from the Missouri Art Museum. The art clip I showed you earlier today was from the Art Museum, but I will also show uh, at the end of this um, art um, First Friday guide. I'm going to show you a nice little. Uh, basically our clip from our very own Rick Phillips from the uh, Gallery of the Visual Arts. So you guys can check that out as well. So moving on, let's uh, just do a portrait project. It's a Hammond Arcade building. Portrait project is a large scale uh, participa uh, participatory, sorry, it's participation art project that Jen Bradsley started this summer with a goal of document the Missoula cycle community in an effort uh, to need uh, to the need uh, for a summer uh, to the oh wait wait so a need for a bike park in Missoula. These images uh, range from toddlers to seven years of age, all abilities and types of cyclists, including BMX riders, mountain bikers, uh, road bikers, communities, downhillers, free ride bikers, and uh, cyclocross, cyclo cyclocross. Ugh. I have no idea what that word is, but the goal is to get portraits of people after they were done writing and try to capture one of three different feelings that they are uh, um, consistent with biking, freedom, fierce, and fun. So you can check that out, and it's going to be at the Hammond Arcade Building starting at 5 p.m. Um, moving on to the next one, we got... Rattlesnake Elementary School. They're doing a rummage sale this weekend as well, so you could, should totally check that out. They're doing a book sales and doing all sorts of stuff this morning as well until 10.30 a.m. But um, th a lot of art from Rattlesnake School is going to be featured at La Stella Blue, and they're, it's, uh, the inspiration for this collection was artist uh, Wazily uh, Kandinsky and his uh, piece uh, titled Square with uh, um, Concentrate Circles. Um, uh, they um, he's a Russian artist who helped pioneer abstract modern art. His inspiration piece gave the kindergarten and third grade students the opportunity to play with shapes and colors just as he did. And of course, the artwork is only for display. So uh, Jolene Brink and Lynn Sanders, of course, I interviewed them on Wednesday. The interview is available online on my Facebook page as well, and you can learn more about water maps. And it's going to be at the E3 Convergence Gallery. Check it out. It's going to be great. They use uh, uh, old uh, maps. And then they uh, uh, they restored some of the maps, some of the old maps that are not used, and they kind of drew and painted and did some nice things over them as well. It's a multimedia piece that you guys can check out at the E3 Convergence Gallery all the way until 9 p.m. Most things end at 8. They're going to be uh, open a little bit longer for this event. Next, we got... Uh, Exploring Energy Systems by Bike. Uh, Waukee, uh, Wild Rocky Field Institute is uh, part of the first Friday and is doing a featuring of 2017 Cycling the Rocky alumni. Um, Stephanie Fisher, uh, 
Her photo essay highlights energy impacts from a variety of Montana's energy resources. All of the photos were taken during a 700-mile bike tour of the state of Montana, beginning in Billings and ending in Glacier National Park. Um, and you can check that out. It's going to be at the Wild Rockies Field Institute. Um, next, we got the Downtown Dance Collective is featuring artist Aaron Huffman. Aaron Huffman is a fifth generation uh, Montanan. Having a large family brought a lot of color, creativity, and humor to her life. Her style is an eclectic portra portrayal of her view of landscapes, animals, people, and experiences. And you can check that out. It's going to be at the Downtown Dance Collective tonight. Um, all these events are starting at 5 p.m., just so you guys know. Uh, these are the actual events. A lot of the artists actually go to their own events, so you can ask them about their inspiration. So nature is uh, the next event right here, as you can tell. Oils by Laura Blue Palmer. Uh, opening reception is from 5 to 8 p.m. There's a collection of birds that she finds beautiful and a variety of landscape uh, scenes. The birds are in portrait form, each painted uh, realistically. Um, they Most of have been studied from her backyard. The landscapes are a continuum of light study, including memories of sunset and places she has visited. Up next, we got Art of Refinement, and this is going to be at the 709 Gallery Inside Montana Art and Framing. And uh, basically, this is going to be an exhibit including recent works and past works that are uh, abstraction and impressions of nature. Uh, the careful refinement of hues and color values are uh, contribute to a sense of space and tranquility. And this is Dennis Sloan Oils. Um, up next, we got a uh, first Friday holiday show uh, going to be at Eka Gecko Design. So it's Freedom uh, Lee Drudge. Is ho uh, so is going to be the artist featured there. There will be prints and originals for sale, as well as snacks and beverages. Freedom will also be letting his website out into the wild, and there will be lots and lots of product. Clay Studio is doing a holiday sale. Um, I did say that there's a holiday sale going on as well. Uh, it's featuring work by uh, Current and Past, a Clay Studio residents, local and national artists. The December sale is just uh, the place to take care of your holiday shopping. Um, whether you need are looking for a new mug for your morning coffee or a vast of a bouquet of flowers or sculptures to decorate your home. So here's a funny story. Um, this is a story that was told to me by somebody at Four Ravens Gallery, which is another art museum here in town, that uh, if you got a chance uh, that she tells the story in the Look Before You Speak uh, show that I produce here on MCAT, which is a 12-episode run, and it is a uh, there is a guy who uh, basically walked around holding a mug such as this around and basically kind of walked around for five minutes, and a lot of the... Uh, People um, at the store were just like, "What are you doing?" And it was just like, "That's weird." And then they, uh, and he went up to them and was just like, "Well, this looks like a mug I'd be carrying all the time, so I'll take it." And that's th that's basically the story. <laughs> uh, it's so interesting how people just, uh, um, a lot of ways, uh, uh, for them, uh, mugs are how they associate their look. A lot of times, if they're known as the person who likes to have a nice, uh, cold uh, black coffee just drinking it and just kind of holding their cup all the time. Um, they want a cup that look that accentu accentuates their look, even if it is an, an old, rugged Montana guy with a uh, few words, but w with, uh, with little words, sorry. Um, anyways, <laughs> I think I said it right the first time. But that basically concludes everything you guys need to know about uh, your first Friday out and about uh, ritual. If you guys are going out in the downtown Missoula area, those are the places to kind of go check out. Those are the kind of things that are highlighting artists for this First Friday. But, of course, there's always a whole bunch of other First Friday events that are going on here. I missed one that was happening at another place because uh, th when I downloaded the clip, I couldn't put it on the over-the-shoulder. So that's just too bad sometimes. I, I usually have to get rid of one or two uh, um over the shoulder uh, event that I can't do because the picture wasn't formatted correctly for our system here. So that's uh, basically kind of wraps up for your uh, first Friday events. I uh, I got some other events that are happening as well. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna kind of gloss over some of the Friday stuff because that's that this is your Friday. And here is an art clip, and this is gonna be at the Gallery of the Visual Arts until December 10th. So basically, you have until Finals Week to check all this art at the Gallery of Visual Arts at the Social Science Building at the University of Montana. Uh, did it freeze?
Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about not being so loud into the microphone. Uh, let's talk about um, some things that are happening in terms of events in and around the city of Missoula. I have no city council today. They were talking about a basically approval of a granny apartment or as uh, ADA or ADH uh, or, uh, you know, like there's extended apartments. That's basically what they talked about city council. There's a couple other things here and there, but nothing too um, um, too fancy to talk about as well. And plus, I'm, I've been really busy. Um, <laughs> or really lazy. I don't know. But let's not talk about things uh, about myself. Let's talk about things that you guys can do starting this morning at the Dickinson Lifeline Learning Center. Um, there's introduction to Lightroom. Lightroom is Adobe's Swiss Army Knife software for digital photographers, addressing the needs for importing, filing, adjusting, organizing, converting, and displaying digital images. This workshop is for those who are new to digital imaging and would like to use Lightroom to organize and preserve their collection of di digital images. And this is happening this morning, starting at 8.30 a.m. There's a holiday book sale continues at Rattlesnake. Uh, elementary from now until 10:30 a.m. Uh, besides all the first Friday events, of course, uh, um, you got Mismo Roots and Ms. Uh, Misa or Mizzou Indoor Sports uh, Arena, which is doing some indoor fun. Basically, starting at 9:30 a.m., going well until noon to 1 p.m. You can check out any of those places as well. Bitter Gymnastics does things uh, uh, for like adult um, uh, TNT, uh, um, and that usually uh, is some time in the afternoon on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, community coats at Southgate Mall is continuation. So if you have an old coat that you don't wear anymore and you want to donate it, make sure it's in a decent condition, but they're able to repair certain things, but don't give them a lost cause, basically. Um, and that's going to basically happen all through the Christmas season, all the way leading up to December 24th, where they will be given to people who are in need of coats this winter. Elf on a Shelf vis visits the uh, Missoula Public Library. The library's very own Elf on a Shelf Page visits the children's department for the entire month of December. Each day she hides a different spot and it's up to you to find her. When you do, let the children's staff know and receive a sweet treat. So it's a nice little uh, hide and seek game played every single day at the Missoula Public Library and it all starts um, this morning at 10 a.m. Festival of Trees, so Festival of uh, the Tree or the Lighting of the Downtown Christmas Tree events start this morning starting at First Interstate Bank at 11 a.m., the Festival of Trees is a cherished community event taking place December 1st through the 3rd on the 6th floor of the First Interstate Building in downtown Missoula. The festival includes the tour of trees showcasing over 30 beautiful and unique decorated trees and holiday items, teddy bear t uh, teas for children, and two evenings of adult, the holiday soiree and tree auction, Friday night and up near the rooftop uh, Parade of Lights viewing party taking place Saturday night. Um, of course, for more event details, you can go to uh, MissoulaDowntown.org, or is it .com? Um, but it's Missoula Downtown. You can Google it, and you can find it, and it talks about this event and more. Um, Cribbage and Bridge is uh, at 1230-ish at, at the Senior Center. Uh, uh, depth uh, Psychology for Providers, the Learning Center at Red Willow is doing a class uh, for people to get certified and um, approved for nine CEs for mental health practitioners. And uh, yeah, it's a learning uh, center for Red, Red Willow. It's to continue education, to basically become certified and um, more so in terms of people, uh, of, of caregivers who work with people who have mental illnesses. So you can check that out. It's $165 for this two day workshop. It starts this afternoon at 2 p.m., goes till five. And then of course there's a Saturday all day event that happens from nine to 5 p.m. And that's all you need to take to become certified. Um, and here's some more events happening from MissoulaEvents.net. Um, Basically, uh, um, let's see, there's a couple of things happening. Uh, Peter and the Star Catcher is going to be at the University of Montana tonight at 7.30 p.m. It's, uh, it, the, the whole idea of this event is everything to do with uh, Peter Pan, and it's a nice little, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's geared more towards the funny part of Peter Pan. Um, so you can check that out. It's going to be at the University of Montana, and I think this is the last weekend to check it out, 7.30 p.m., and I think their last uh, show matinee would be at 2, p 2 in the afternoon on a Sunday. Kaleido uh, uh, Kentoscope, uh, so, uh, there's a screen dance film festival. Um, <laughs> No copyright infringement there at the Roxy Theater. Um, it's going to be dance um, starting at 8 p.m. Um, Nightmare, which is basically Nightmare without uh, any of the vowels except for the E at the end, is going to be at the Woma Theater and it's electronic DJ music. Um, time for a quickie. 
is going to be at the Roxy. It's going to be a comedy um, performance um, for a bunch of little short plays that are happening at the Roxy Theater tonight as well. And if you guys aren't going to see A Christmas Carol, you guys should go see A Christmas Carol. The musical. It's a musical version of Charles Dickens' classic tale of Scrooge when he is visited by three ghosts. And, spoiler alert, he comes to find the true meaning of Christmas, family, and love. Um, also tonight, uh, if you're not going to go, uh, when you're done with all that stuff, you guys can go to an ugly sweater party with Lola Creek Band at the Sunrise Saloon. Otto Ranch Hands is going to be at the Union Club. Um, Lola Creek Band, um, wait, they wrote it twice. So uh, basically the other ugly sweater party continues with another band. There's going to be two bands with Lola Creek. I don't know. They just posted it twice on Muzo Events. Ignore me. Uh, 20 Grand um, is going to be at the uh, Top Hat Lounge. If you like funk and hip-hop music, Top Hat is the place to be. Uh, <laughs> but that's kind of like everything you guys need to know about what's happening for your Friday night events. Here's some Saturday events. I'm just going to just like dive right into it. Just like get right into it. Um, Missoula Valley Winter Market continues. So if for those of you who are still kind of like, I, I wish there was like some kind of farmer's market in the winter. Well, this is it. This is it. It happens at the Missoula Senior Center, 9 a.m. to about 1 p.m. And it's basically every single Saturday until April 21st, of course, excluding February 24th for some reason. There's fruits, vegetables, uh, fresh baked uh, bread, pastries, fruit preserves, honey, eggs, and cured meat. Um, so you get to check all that out and more. There's a Scandinavian marketplace also happening, uh, hosted by the Sons of Norway Pines, homemade leaves, croom cake, uh, San Brackles, uh, Pepper Cocker, um, Fataman, Fataman, Fatig, Fatigman, Rosettes, Rose Pauline, Knitted Mittens, um, Wheat Weaving. I know the I, I knew how to say the uh, Knitted Mitten part. Wood carvings, uh, Scandinavian sweaters, and other Nordic crafts is happening at the Sons of Nordic Pines. Um, these are all the crafts fair that happened Saturday, so I'm just going to kind of go through it. Um, they're happening one at the Missoula Eagles Holiday Craft Bazaar. Um, Missoula Eagles is hosting its annual uh, holiday bazaar. Uh, greeting cards, wreaths, jewelry, uh, wooded t-shirts, wood t-shirts, sorry, it's not wooded t-shirts. Lunch will also be available to purchase. Table and lunch sales benefit the auxiliary fund for the Eagles. Um, I think it's Eagle Scouts. Um, let me just double check. Yeah, whatever, I'm just gonna move on. Helga Elementary PTA Crafts Fair. The Parent Teacher uh, Association is doing a crafts fair at Helma Hellgate Elementary, which is just off of uh, Mullen Road uh, and Flynn Lane. So if you go down Mullen Road, you take a look right on Flynn Lane. It's the school to the left. You can't miss it. It's a bunch of little schools. Uh, um, and it's going to go from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the middle school gym and commons area to support families in need for Christmas. Uh, CS Porter uh, Middle School is doing a crafts fair as well starting at 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And this is a crafts fair and basically enjoy shopping, homemade crafts from over 50 local and regional artists. Winter Mitten Craft is going to be at Families First Children's Museum from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Head downtown for the Parade of Lights and all the other holiday activities. Stop by the museum and warm up with it. Enjoy a little fun with your family. They'll be open regular hours and will be offering a special Winter Mitten Craft for those kids to enjoy. Parade of Lights Storytime is going to be at the Museum Public Library starting at 1030 a.m. So you get it in celebration with the Predator Lights. Missoula Public Library will have a story time and crafts meet at the Dragon Rug area in the Children's Department from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, there's a 15th annual Parade of Lights, and it's going to be at various locations starting at 12 p.m. Uh, start the holiday off right. Uh, Santa Claus will be at the Florence Hotel. It's going to be the Santa Claus that will be in the Parade of Lights, so you guys can check it out and more. Uh, so uh, Missoula Downtown slash com or contact Sarah Ferguson by emailing her sarah at missoulodowntown.com. You can call them at 543-4238 for more information. And if you guys aren't doing anything or if you if you want to drop off your kids and just go shopping, do the holiday shopping because um, you're going to have plenty of chances to drop off your kids for your Saturday um, drop-in here at MCAT. Saturday animation drop-in is from 1 to 5 p.m. It's a great way to uh, drop your kids off for four hours for $10 only. Kids get to hang out, make a stop animated movie, maybe do some games, hang out, and just basically it's a whole idea of just making movies, and it's a media arts kind of drop-in. So if you really want to get into the nitty-gritty details, you can call anytime at 542-6228, um, or you can email us mcat at mcat.org. Parade of Lights starts at 6 p.m., and there will be uh, – lighting the Christmas tree at the uh, near the Red X's at North Higgins. So it's just out there. You can't miss it. Um, it's gonna, They're going to be lighting that big old tree at 6.15 p.m., uh, allegedly. Um, but 
depending upon how long the parade lasts, the parade ends with uh, Santa Claus, and then Santa Claus uh, uh, and the, the singers and the choir sing. They light the tree, they sing some more, hang out, uh, be bitterly cold because it's really cold, especially for lighting of the Christmas tree. I don't know why. It just happens to be like one of the coldest nights of the winter season is during um, – <laughs> <laughs> the Parade of Lights. So just be aware of that as well. So let me talk about some um, events that are happening um, later. Uh, so if you guys are going to go out night and go clubbing, you guys can go clubbing at the um, various places. The Dark Horse Bar is doing a blistered earth rock music. Um, uh, time for a quickie. It's going to continue at the Roxy Theater. Absolutely with Chris Moon at the Ballander. JD and Western Front is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Karaoke is going to be at the VFW. JD and Western Front will be at the Sunrise Saloon, Mudslide Charlie at Union Club, Yak Attack at the Top Hat Lounge, and uh, yeah, those are some of your events that are happening this weekend as well. If you're interested in finding out more about uh, Missoula events uh, and learning about the Missoula Town Town area, go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is your resource and mine to tell you about what's just going on in Missoula. Hey, Missoula, what's going on? Well, MissoulaEvents.net, that's what's going on. That's like that's like that's like their new slogan. It's like, hey, what's going on in Missoula? And it's like. MissoulaEvents.net. Are you serious? It's like, oh no, okay, 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 okay. Just put down, just just put down the knife. Okay, okay, okay. Seriously, okay, okay. Anyways, that's me trying to be funny. All right, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, I want to thank um the uh the two ladies uh who came down here, uh, Miss uh, Groats and uh, Fontenot for joining me this morning from the Washington Children's Shelter. They have their open house on Sunday from 11 to 2 p.m. The only chance you guys will get to see what Washington Children's Shelter is and where it is and what it's all about. They'll be decorating, they'll keep on decorating. That it's gonna look really nice and they've been working really hard to get this open house just ready for everybody. So go on and support the Washington Children's Shelter starting this Sunday. So uh, if you wanna learn more information, I, I do gotta do a plug, one, more, one last plug. Uh, just go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice for me to write it out twice. You can uh, find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, along with uh, MCAT as well. Um, our goal is to reach 2,000 likes on our Facebook page. Yeah, I know, small town, right? Uh, 2,000 likes by the end of 2017. So we're still looking for 49 more likes on our MCAT Facebook page. So please like our MCAT Facebook page, um, and then we'll be good to go. Oh, we just want to make 2,000 by the end of the year. That's a, that's a solid goal. It's it's fair. We just want people to like us on Facebook. And also tonight, um, MCAT will be starting um, basketball, so you can watch us streaming on our MCAT page um, for basketball, and it's going to be Sentinel High School versus somebody. Um, so I'm not going to be there because I'm going to do the Christmas Carol play. So it's going to be Neil Wells here, our very own uh, teen wonder with the, teen, the Dream Teens, will be uh, basically running the whole show tonight, uh, starting at 7.15 p.m., live streaming on MCAT's Facebook page. So uh, thank you for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. It's first Friday. Get out and about. It's a good way to hop in and stay indoors and look at some art, get warm, um, drink some wine, have some hors d'oeuvres, and all that wonderful stuff. So thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Mm -hmm.